Hi guys, welcome to Simply Scuba. So if you are cold water diving, or if you're thinking about cold water diving, then it's definitely accessible, but you do need to change the way that you think and the equipment that you bring. So of course we thought, hey, maybe if you're sort of thinking about getting into cold water diving, would it be useful if there was a video that gave you the top five bits and bobs that you need to invest in so that you can go cold water diving? So that's what we've done. This video is gonna go over a few bits and bobs that um, is definitely worth investing in if you're thinking about going cold water diving. Okay, so the first thing that most people actually forget is the bit in between the actual diving. Most people focus on cold water diving, on sort of what you need to wear sort of whilst you're in the water. A lot of people forget that you spend a lot of time out of the water. So a decent hat is uh, is usually my first recommendation if you're gonna be cold water diving. So um, yeah, keep your head warm in between dives and keep your, uh, your head dry in between dives because wet hair is just gonna keep you really, really cold. Um, this, for example, this is a, a fourth element. This is uh, zero therm and uh, very, very effective at uh, sort of keeping you warm, but it's not uh, it's not very bulky. But um, but yeah, invest in a decent hat that you can wear in between dives because that will make a world of difference at keeping you warm. Whilst we're talking about your head, um, you're obviously gonna need a thicker hood. Um, so this one, for example, this is a 10 mil hood. Um, so this is a centimeter of neoprene on the, uh, so the orange section. So it's really nice and thick. Um, clunky hoods, they are a bit of a pain, but mainly when you're out of the water because you can't really hear what's going on. Um, but actually once they're on, they're much, much better. And um, they do sort of insulate you very, very effectively. And yeah, a lot of heat is gonna come out of your head, so you do have to keep your head nice and warm. And uh, and trust me, because I've tried it, if you take your hood off um, sort of during a, uh, a cold water dive, it's just instant ice cream headache, so it's really not worth it. So invest yourself in a decent hood. You can get bibbed ones like this one, so this has this little skirt around the bottom, so that's more for wetsuits. Or um, if your uh, if your dry suit has that kind of um, sort of water dam around the neck, um, or you can get them without a bib, and um, that just means it's not going to interrupt with your um, your sort of neck seal on your dry suit. Uh, again, keeping with your head, the one bit that's usually um, sort of in contact with water is your face or normally your cheeks. And at the end of a cold water dive, you'll realize that as soon as you hit the surface and you try to talk, your jaws are just kind of numb from the cold. But a full face mask will definitely help that. So if you're really thinking about getting into it, a full face mask just isolates your entire face. So uh, it keeps you that much warmer. They act as a traditional second stage, um, only it covers your entire face. They have plenty of benefits on top of that, like they automatically defog themselves, so you never have to worry about that. But one of the main benefits of them is cold water diving. Because your face is completely isolated, that icy cold water never actually touches your face. Um, so these are very, very useful at uh, just sort of keeping your face and your head particularly warm. The other bit that usually is exposed to water is your hands. And uh, neoprene gloves are fine, um, but after a while your hands do tend to get a little bit numb, especially when you're up in the Arctic. So dry glove systems are essential. Um, I myself, I use dry gloves as much as I can because they can be really nice and thin, so you still have your dexterity, uh, but they keep your hands warm. You do have to um, sort of adjust for that um, sort of pressure as it goes down because this isn't air space but that's very simply done when it's integrated into your dry suit so yeah if you are thinking about going into colder and colder um, sort of dives and you are a dry suit diver then i highly recommend a decent dry glove ring system either like qb or waterproofs ultima uh, because they will keep your hands that much warmer and if you're going to really really cold waters then you can always invest in a heated undersuit so this uh, for example this is a santi uh, sort of heated vest this has heating warming coils built into it um, and these are powered by a battery that sits on the outside of your dry suit and uh, and that physically warms you up now this is going to affect your decompression so you do have to do a little bit of research into um, sort of how it's going to affect your decompression but these do make a world of difference and um, at sort of keeping you nice and comfortable and even if you don't actually have the uh, the suit turned on it's still a thermal undersuit um, so it's still going to keep you nice and warm and keep that sort of airspace over your body 
So there were five bits of equipment that we recommend that cold water divers invest in, but what do you recommend? Let us know in the comments below, and uh, that way, if you're thinking about getting into cold water diving, uh, just kind of have a read through and sort of see what you should probably invest in uh, if you're diving in cold waters. Of course, thank you for watching and safe diving. In today's video, we're gonna be going over, you're a brand new scuba diver, you have nothing, but you've just got your cert card, and you think that you need to buy your own equipment, which is a great idea. It is very important to have your own dive equipment, um, but what should you prioritize? In today's video, we're going to be looking at five bits of equipment for new scuba divers.